cool. Hey guys, Devin here with Make Anything and, well, the reason you can make just about anything with a 3D printer is because it isn't bound by the same set of constraints as traditional injection molding or other manufacturing processes. With 3D printing, you can do a lot of really crazy stuff. FDM printing, however, which is what you see on this channel, laying down layers of plastic, still does have some constraints. And while it's fun to work around those, it's also fun to sometimes challenge those limits and see if you can still do some things that don't seem so possible with FDM printing. And that's what we're doing today. There's one thing that I've wanted to try for a really long time, and I've had some other people mention it in the comments as well, and that is to 3D print a slinky. Now, slinky is a trademark product, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna 3D print a slinky. We're gonna 3D print a Springo. Huh? It's pretty much the same thing, but um, it's not. It's 3D printed, and it's not open on both ends. It's got rings instead of, I don't know. But it's not a slinky. It's a springo. All right, so that's the challenge for today, and we're gonna try to use Fusion 360 and see if we can make a functioning springo. And I don't want just any little dinky spring. I want this thing to actually be a quality springo. I want it to be able to do that little walk down the stair trick. You know that thing that that slinkies do, not that it's a slinky. All right, before I dig myself into this hole any further, let's go right ahead and see what we can make in Fusion 360. All right, so here we are in Fusion, and the first thing I'm gonna do is start a sketch on the bottom plane here and draw two circles, one for the outer diameter of the springo and another for the inner. Then I'll hit D and give those dimensions. The inside will be 35 millimeters and the outside will be 40. So with that simple sketch, I can do an extrude and bring that up 100 millimeters. And now this is where I had to get a bit experimental. I decided to create a form because there is this special little trick you can do. Considering there's no built-in tool for drawing a helix in Fusion 360 just yet. So what I'm going to do is create two faces within this sculpting environment. One above and one below the cylinder. And then I'm going to use this bridge feature which lets me select these two sides and then create faces connecting between the two. Then I can insert twists like so, although this one's a little bit too gentle. So how about instead of 21 faces we have, say, 200? Hey, that looks a lot more like a springo. So maybe we'll take that down just a bit to 15. And yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's give it a shot. So I'll hit OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this form. From there, I'll go into the patch environment, and then I will use the thicken command on this surface, creating a 0.15 millimeter thickness, which you can see if I zoom in here. Now I can go back into the model environment and select the combine feature, which will let me use this spiral as a cutting tool and basically cut away from my cylinder. Because it's 0.15 millimeters thick, I now have that tolerance in between each layer. And the idea is that hopefully when I print this, that little air gap will allow the part to still print successfully, but it will create this weak spiral all the way up so that I can kind of break it apart and have myself a slingo. Now the bottom here tapers to a point and that's not the prettiest thing to print. So we're gonna go ahead and cap the bottom and the top with a solid circle. I'll basically just create a sketch on that bottom surface and then copy these circles and then do an extrusion. Then I can select the whole ring and extrude that down a bit. Three millimeter sounds good and now you can see it doesn't end with that little taper but it's got a solid ring on the bottom. Now we're just testing this springo so I'm gonna go ahead and do another extrude cut just chopping off a chunk of the top here because we don't want to do this giant print without knowing if it's actually going to work. So we'll just do a symmetric extrude and that'll cut the top off of that springo. Then we can cap the top the same way we did with the bottom. I'll do a chamfer on these top and bottom edges just to make it a little neater and easier to remove from the build plate. And in fact, 
To make the whole thing easier to break apart, I'm going to put a chamfer all the way around this spiral. Now when I was doing this, I realized that I actually had two spirals, which is the result of the method I was using of creating that kind of helix to cut everything apart. So ha! Totally different from a slinky. It is a springo, indeed. Before I send this thing out to print, I'll just do a quick cross-section analysis using this plane to cut it open. And we can see that there is in fact a tiny gap in between each layer. And yeah, let's give it a shot. I'll go ahead and right click that body and then save it as an STL. And there's a lot of round edges here, so there's gonna be a lot of triangles, but uh, medium quality should work just fine. So we're ready to print this out. And today I will be using Rigid Ink PLA. I've got some blue and I've also got some gray. So I actually did the test in gray and it's printed here with a 0.15 millimeter layer height to match that gap that I modeled into my Springo. But it wasn't quite enough. This knife didn't work and the X-Acto knife was pretty sketchy. Not exactly the safest way to create a Springo. But it actually did kind of work. I was able to start separating the layers and I made it about 60% of the way through before one of the parts broke. So I actually printed the same exact model again, but at 0.1 millimeter layer height. And I actually got that to come apart completely and create this Springo. But it's not exactly what I was trying to achieve. So we're gonna go back into Fusion and try things a little differently. This time I downloaded an add-on for Fusion 360, which gives you that capability to draw a helix. I can just input the values here and it'll create the helix for me. It uses centimeters instead of millimeters, so I had to kind of move a decimal point here. But I want this one to be a little bigger, so I'm going to give this a radius of 4 centimeters, or an 80 millimeter diameter. And then I'll do a 2 millimeter pitch and 50 turns. So that'll make it 100 millimeters tall and 2 millimeters between each line. Then I'm going to create another helix that is nearly the same but with a smaller radius, which will basically define the inner diameter of my Springo. So let's make that a 3.4 centimeter radius and then make the other values identical. So if you do that correctly, you should have these two concentric spirals with the endpoints lined up like they are here. The add-on just happens to put the endpoints on this XZ axis, so I'll click on that and create a sketch. Now I can sketch the profile of my Springo by drawing a sketch that includes those two endpoints. So I'll actually use the rectangle tool and then just create a rectangle that connects between the two. For the height of this thing, I want it to basically be the pitch minus the gap I'm going to create. And this time it's going to be a 0.25 millimeter gap. So 1.75 millimeters all around should give me that perfect tolerance. I'll use the sweep tool and I'm going to select path and guide rail. Then I'll select my rectangle as the profile, the inner helix as my path and the outer helix as my guide rail. After Fusion does some calculations, we have ourselves a newborn Springo. Well, I'm going to do a few changes just to make things a little easier for me. First of all, I'm going to go back into this sketch and I'm going to swap out these flat sides with some arcs, which should make it easier to separate the layers when I have this printed out. So I'll do a three point arc between the top and bottom here. And because I don't want the overhang to be too drastic that I can't print it, I'll also create a tangent line here that I'll hit X to make a construction line and I'll define that to be 45 degrees, which basically sets the maximum overhang angle. And 45 degrees is something that most FDM printers can handle pretty easily. I'll create a center line here and use that to just mirror the arc onto the other side. Then I'll hit those flat sides of the rectangle and hit X to make them construction lines. And now we have the profile that I was trying to make. When I close that out, Fusion 360 automatically updates everything. So now I have that same sweep, but with those rounded edges. It's looking pretty good now, but I can't print this just yet because the bottom here isn't flat. So I'm going to do a sketch on the right plane here, and I'll draw a rectangle that is slightly shorter than the spiral I've created. And I'll use that to do an extrude and basically cut off the top and bottom of this springo and make sure those surfaces are totally flat. So I'll extrude that rectangle in both directions, and then I'll change the operation to be an intersection which means it'll cut away everything except for where that extrusion overlaps with my Springo, essentially cutting off the top and bottom. But now we have that really thin taper once again, which is no good for printing. So what I'll do is select the right plane here and first I'll create a section analysis 
to cut that in half just to make it easier for me to see what's going on. And then on that same plane, I'm going to do a sketch, draw a center line, and I'll create some profiles for the top and bottom that I'll be able to revolve around and create a nice solid base on either end of my springo. I'll just draw that bottom cap and then I will create a center line here halfway up and then I'll mirror those lines up to the top so that I have a symmetrical springo. Now I can go to create and revolve and then revolve those profiles. Rather than join that with the sweep right away, I'm gonna create some new bodies. That way I can hide that spring while I do some final touches which kind of lightens the load on Fusion 360 so it doesn't have to keep calculating that spring as I do these little fillets and stuff to make things prettier. But once that looks good, I will reveal that spring again and then use the combine function to join everything together into a single part. And that's it, we can send it to the printer. So here it is printing out. Once again, I used a 0.15 millimeter layer height, but remember I increased the tolerance between the springs to 0.25. And with that adjustment, you can see it printed out really clean and it was also a lot easier to separate the layers. I managed to get the whole thing apart without any damage. And the result was a really good looking spring. This looks super promising, so let's go ahead and take it to the staircase and see if it passes the test. Yeah. Well, sure enough, I managed to get it all the way to the bottom of the stairs, and it couldn't have looked any better. I was also able to create this smaller diameter springo by keeping all the other settings the same, and it came out really great. I also tried another small one with thinner layers, but it was just a little too fragile. Although, what I did salvage did work. Still, I think that 1.75 millimeter height is the magic number. And I continued to use that for my future springos. Like this fancy pentagon springo, as demonstrated by my lovely assistant. This one also can make it down the stairs, although with a bit less grace and a bit more character. Then there is this, a rocket ship. Now that I had a better idea of the tolerances and whatnot, I was able to create some more complex forms like this. I made this rocket ship using the same double helix technique I used in my early springos, but I did make sure to give them that 0.25 millimeter tolerance in between each layer so that it comes apart easy enough. And just for fun, I also gave it a quick paint job. The only paints I had around were spray paints, but I was able to just spray it into the cap and then paint it onto the model. It's not the best paint to use with your brushes, but it came out alright. And it's got a super satisfying spring to it. I think this could be great on the dashboard of my car. Oh, and if all else fails, there's always the spaghetti springo. All you've got to do is have your extruder running about 50 millimeters above the build plate and let it naturally coil itself into a spring. I mean, I really did this as a joke, but it's actually super springy, so I think it could be useful. Well, there it is, guys. I did it. I made like a really awesome Springo. This thing, it works exactly as well as I could have possibly wanted it to. And it printed really clean with no supports. I'm beyond stoked on how well this came out. And I'm really excited to see all the different ways that it can be modified by the 3D printing community and all the things that we can come up with. I'm definitely gonna keep trying stuff with this as well. I mean, not only did I make this really cool, classic springo but i also made some very interesting shapes like this pentagon one these double helixes that were kind of an accident but came out really cool and because 3d printing has so few limits i was able to make some more advanced springos like this rocket ship and this whale <laughs> okay well i hope you guys thought that was super cool and if you guys have a 3d printer i'm sure you want to try printing one of these well you're in luck because the files are available at myminifactory.com. I'll put links in the description. And I think I'll also put some up on Shapeways so that you can order one even if you don't have a printer. All right, well, thanks for joining. As always, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Fashion.